Hey, welcome to the next wave of digital video. I'm your host, Tony Reale. Today we're going to be talking about 360 video. 360 video is something that we've uh, slowly become gone from hobbyists um, and starting to pr uh, progress into professional uh, productions for. Uh, but 360 video is simply put a video that surrounds the entirety of you. Um, this uh, doing 360 photography has existed for a long time. You could use just a regular DSLR and pan around a room and then stitch it together. Um, cell phones even for a while have allowed you to do that where you just take it and you click and then you move and you click. You can do a panorama but then you can also do a 360 as well. The, the, the challenge with video is that you need to be able to have a camera uh, on all sides of you being able to take the video at the same time. Some are self-contained, some are rigs that you can stitch together. We've got a couple systems and I'm going to take you through uh, two different scales or two different ends of the spectrum I guess for 360 video. By the way, I'll put a link here. You can check out our NAB coverage uh, for VR we kind of went through a variety of 360 video cameras with there as well and going to NAB and coming back that helped us decide what kind of 360 camera that we were going to be investing in short term. So uh, I just uh, got back from Africa a couple months ago and we were doing a shoot out there for a well drilling ministry and um, I decided to, to invest in a Samsung Gear 360 before we went out there. I really wanted to be able to take Africa and bring it home, share it with my friends and family. Um, and so with this, I was able to take pictures and video and we'll go ahead and post a link to a video that we shot, just a few clips stitched together, nothing fancy, but it gives you a feel for what the camera can do uh, and what the quality looks like. Uh, overall, I was really impressed with the, the Gear 360. The quality of the video is actually pretty good and uh, the, f the ease of use probably is the main thing that makes it awesome. So you can pr pretty much just power the camera and I have it on right now. You can hit the record button and you can start taking video. It's simple as that. It takes one micro SD card and it lumps the videos together. Now you have to use special software to stitch the videos and kind of de-warp it. Um, but that's software that comes with it so there's not an extra cost for that. So the nice things about this camera is if you have a Samsung mobile device, you can actually live view the feed. It connects wirelessly and you can see here, I'll enlarge it, you can actually see the live video feed of what this camera is, is looking at. I'm not recording right now, this is just a live video feed. So if I look at myself and wave, there's very little lag in it. Uh, so that was a, that's a really neat feature. Also, if you take a picture, it can do the stitching right in here, transfers it right to your phone. Um, you download it to your phone, it does the, the, the warping that's necessary to then upload it to something like Facebook um, or any other place that does 360 photography. And so again, I'm in Africa, I'm taking some cool pictures. I was able to upload it right from my phone to Facebook and share it with people. Uh, some really, really great 360 photography. You know, no computer necessary, just doing it right in here. Now, the way that 360 cameras work, and I'll give you a little understanding. So if I pull up, um, this is a photo that I shot while we were in Africa, and if you see here, there's two spheres. So you got one sphere and one sphere. Basically, there's two lenses on this 360 camera, and that is taking on uh, two 4K sensors. Now, the problem is, you think, okay, this is 4K, um, you see what it's doing is it's actually recording it across two separate images across the 4K sensor. This, the edges of this end up getting spliced and stitched together. So you actually only get a very small section of this. So let's go to an image that I've actually stitched together. So now if you look at that same image here, this has actually been stitched together. So you see there's no longer the spheres. They're merging the edges together. And if you look at it, I'll pull it up in 360 view and you know it stitches together really really well there's me in that picture um, and the quality is decent but you're really getting less than 4k so when it's all said and done it's all stitching together into one video file that's 4k but that's two separate images recording 4k then when you get into VR and you're looking at it you're only looking at a small res maybe less than 720p resolution at a given time so as much as I like the gear 360 for hobbyist stuff when we're going to be moving into professional productions, that's where we have this rig. This is the GoPro Omni rig. It has six GoPro Hero 4s in here, and that allows for up to an 8K image resolution. Um, you'll notice that we've got this configuration, the six cameras all uh, kind of rigged up in this way. And this really gives you a much higher resolution because the camera, like I showed you before, it's only using a small portion of that 4K image capture. 
So if you only have two 4K imagers, like on that one, you you stitch it together and then you get a, an end resolution that's closer to 4K, but you don't have as much room for stitching and you, you can get some image integration. With this, you have six 4K cameras and you can stitch them all over together and get a 8K image and a higher resolution 8K image because you have more resolution that you can pull from each of the cameras. You're not trying to have one lens stretch and cover as much of the sphere. So this is the main reason that more cameras sometimes creates a better image. I have this rigged up on our Matthews V-Rig 30, um, and that's a, this is a, uh, a stand that's specifically designed for virtual reality camera rigs, 360 cameras. Um, some of the things that are unique about it, it has this ball mount head here. So one thing that you might do, this is a great configuration for if you're gonna just capture an environment. It's very natural, it has a good, good range, but if you're gonna capture a person and you see how you've got this line right here, you'd never wanna stick a person or the main point of capture on a stitch line. So you might reposition the head in a way that would be more in this manner, and then now you can get a clean image of that person and you're not gonna have them falling on a stitch line. So that's really important. You don't wanna have weird ghosting or stitching happening across the person's face or their body. So it really depends, again, on the use that you're gonna use it for. So having that ball head's really nice. Another thing that the V-Ray has is it has some quarter 20 mounts at the top that I've added these cold shoes to and then mounted these, uh, but we call them baton lights, but they're basically, uh, the brand is Young Noao, uh, the YN360s. Ironically, they're called 360 and we're using them for 360s, but they're, they're multicolored, um, you're, you can change the color temperature, you can even change the color, you can, uh, they're RGB lights as well, so you can do red, green, blue, um, but they're, they can go very, very, very bright, and I have four of them rigged up all around here. Now, if you think about when you're shooting 360, you see everything. So there's really no position to light from. Right now I'm using a key light to be able to light me, but if you see everything, if you saw when we were stitched, uh, moving around in that 360 camera, you could see the camera, you could see the monitor that I have here, you can see the light. So there's really no way to hide anything. So the only place to key anyone or bring in some fill light is really from the position of the camera. So that's why we have this rigged here. Now, if you have reflections, you might have to get rid of this, but this is a great place, especially if you're doing some sort of announcer or spokesperson in the 360 environment. Um, so the, the stand is much better than the, the little light stand that we had on our, our um, Gear 360. That was lightweight, but it can get blown over, it can get knocked around, and for a heavier camera, you don't want to use something like that. So having this, this is beefier, it can handle up to 30 pounds. They also have a one that can handle up to 75 pounds. Um, and then it has nice skirting at the base that hides the uh, V-Lock battery that powers the GoPro. Uh, camera rig. This is, even though this is all Hero 4s in here, they have special firmware that makes them all work a uh, slave off of a single camera. So I couldn't just take one of these cameras and use it regularly without replacing the firmware with the original GoPro firmware. Now, a couple best practices when doing 360 video. Again, like we talked about, if you know where your stitch point is, try to avoid placing a person on it. With the Gear 360, there's two lenses. So if I'm gonna be interacting or talking on the camera, I'm gonna try and place one of those lenses facing me. Also, you notice that on both of these camera rigs, I kinda have the camera rigged at eye level. Determine if you're gonna have, if you, especially if you're gonna use this for virtual reality, determine if you're gonna be having the audience in a standing or seated position, and then try to keep the camera at a consistent point throughout all of that. Uh, right now, you know, we're doing all this stuff for uh, trade show booths and, and for standing stuff, and, and whenever I was having my family use it, I was having them standing. Um, also try and average out the average height of a person. So I'm six foot, um, but the average height for people is around five, six. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll try and get uh, the height of the camera and the, the lenses to be around five, six, so that if uh, somebody that's you know shorter puts it on or somebody that's taller puts it on, it doesn't feel too awkward for them to feel like they're a small child or a lumbering giant um, that's you know different from their normal, uh, normal height of them as a person, what they're seeing. Thanks for watching, guys. We, uh, we're gonna be still exploring 360 video. This is a new frontier for us. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll probably make a future video talking about other best practices and things that we learned. Also, uh, when we get into post-production and we do start doing some more heavy stuff, I'm sure we'll do a video for that. So stay tuned and make, be sure to subscribe for future videos.